Why do we need to listen to our things? It is now taken for granted, as I, as I said before, that we do have this persistent communication infrastructure around us. And it is uh, going uh, to be more and more pervasive because overlapping communication methods will be able to make uh, uh, the need more and more fulfillable, satisfiable, reliable, because if we don't have Wi-Fi, we have 3G. If we don't have uh, 3G, we have Zigbee. Uh, whatever, uh, uh, if one fails, we have another <coughs> available, potentially. Uh, however, it is interesting to see that uh, uh, since the dawn of civilization, uh, for um, many reasons, our manufacturing uh, methods uh, haven't changed that much. As we were baking uh, clay pottery in our ovens, uh, we were doing something that is not that different from what uh, the cheap manufacturers are doing in their clean rooms, in their body suits. They are taking a, a, a piece of uh, that matter, they are flattening it out like pizza, uh, and they are drawing uh, figures on them. And after they are happy with the figures, they put it in the oven, take it out, break it in pieces, and, and they are done. There is nothing very much different. So this is uh, about to change a, 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 a little bit and are actually assembling uh, themselves uh, into a, an environment that is uh, going to resemble what uh, some people are calling the smart dust uh, scenario. And sensors that are today clumsy and clunky are going to resemble much more uh, their BIs that also uh, the, the diffusion of uh, the simple number of objects around us uh, is under an exponential curve uh, from personal computers to mobile phones to uh, spines we are seeing increases in orders of magnitude and we have hundreds of millions of pcs but we have billions of mobile phones which approximate the number of humans of the, on the planet planet but the next step towards uh, what is uh, this uh, change in orders of magnitude, when we will have tens of, or hundreds of billions of devices around us, mean that we have to totally rethink how the devices work. Because today uh, we are using uh, our phones as if they were little babies. Uh, we, we pamper them, uh, we uh, run, and, and uh, as soon as they squeak, uh, because their battery is running low, uh, we go to the power socket and make sure that they are recharged. Uh, if they emit a, a different type of cry uh, because their memory is full, oh crap, the diaper, I need to change the diaper, and we delete a few uh, SMS messages from the memory. Uh, now this type of behavior where the objects rely on us to maintain them in a functional state is going to be impossible when we don't have to care for just one or a few or even a few dozen of these darn objects around us, but there will be literally hundreds or thousands of them. So uh, a good example is, is uh, uh, Roomba, which many of you uh, are probably familiar with. Uh, something very, very simple, but still uh, experience changing. The Roomba is capable of finding its own power source. And, and the reason is because we must derive deep knowledge of the environment from these sensors. It is not enough that we uh, are, are happy with what we think is important. It is not enough that we stop at the surface knowledge. Um, when the Romans built the Colosseum, uh, they built it and it is still standing 2,000 years later. And we are very proud and very happy and, and, and we are actually astounded by how reliable that building was. And we suddenly realized that actually they didn't build it to last 2,000 years. They built it like that because they didn't know any better. They didn't know engineering, they didn't know material science, contrary to, for example, uh, an organic um, structure like a plant, which is exquisitely optimized. And paradoxically, uh, something that we despise, uh, uh, or some of us, uh, the, the, the Las Vegas uh, hotels are much more 
uh, adapt uh, to survive in their own environment, exactly because the type of deep knowledge of materials and construction and aiming for ROI, return on investment that have been put into them, is uh, different from the one that we more admire, but actually comes from ignorance rather than knowledge. And I want to tell you uh, a few um, stories around this, how already today we have uh, uh, difficulties of constructing uh, reliable, dependable networks that can gather large amounts of data and, and still uh, be there when, when, the, when they are needed. Uh, not only we have potentially a signal-to-noise problem to uh, make sure that the necessary information is available uh, when we need it. Actually, we have a signal-to-signal -signal problem when everything is, is uh, valuable, or potentially so, uh, but still we cannot manage it. And this is the case of the Large Hadron Collider. Many people don't realize that the sheer volume of data that the experiments are generating is so huge that there is no system that can not only analyze, cannot even memorize all the data at CERN. What they had to start is to think how to throw away data. So what they did is to have three separate filters that do nothing but decide what is the 99% of the data that is being thrown away as it is being generated. And the 1% of the data that is kept, uh, and memorized and analyzed is uh, the only one that any human will ever see. Uh, not only quantity, but also dependability is a problem. There are new types of services that we are very much accustomed of, of, on not being able and dependent, uh, depend on them, especially when there is a spike of interest. So imagine this system is used actually by a handful of humans. And when we think about spy systems and sensor networks of tens of billions of, uh, of, of elements, we are thinking about something that is a, a, enormously bigger. So the test of dependability will be even more crucial uh, to, to, to pass. Aggregation, uh, of course, is uh, also an issue uh, because when vital data uh, is uh, something that, that we need, uh, for example, uh, after the, the, the mortal tsunami in the Indian Ocean, uh, a new network of sensors has been deployed. But this sensor network is of a traditional type. Uh, if we were to substitute uh, um, a few hundred uh, uh, floating sensors with millions of devices, how would we be able to aggregate the data so that we can derive the right level of second-order knowledge, which is what we can act upon. In general, uh, we know uh, that the new phenomena that we face uh, are going to surprise us, and that uh, it will be uh, this kind of surprise that will be, after the fact, the most valuable part of what the new phenomena is. It will be the case that uh, what surprises us about uh, the, the spine sensor networks is going to be something totally uh, unexpected. But we will learn about our environment in the meantime. We will learn to be able and much better listen to the planet around us, which even today is trying to tell us things that we are trying to ignore and can hardly, uh, can hardly afford to ignore anymore at the risk of, of our very race. So thank you very much.